Hi, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How you doing today? Today we're looking at a sort of classic Maytag here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this motor in it. I scrapped this motor out from a, a, an old machine that I, I found at a junkyard. Uh, the motor still looks good, so so we're just going to uh, swap this whole assembly piece in this classic Maytag. Look real glass. Anyway, we're going to swap that motor. So basically, what this motor does, this is actually a gas dryer. You can tell by the panel down here. And so what the dryer will do, it'll, when you try and turn it on, it will just hum. It won't run. And then what I did is I've already checked it. I've already had this dryer apart. And when I turn it on and spin the, spin the motor, then the motor will start. So I know the motor's just weak. So first thing we're going to do is we need to take these screws off. There's one here. It's Phillips down here on the bottom. And then one over here on this side. And that's the first thing we're going to do. We'll pull this front panel off. It hinges from the top. There's little clips on the top here. Once we take those two, two screws off, pull the panel this way, and it'll hinge off from the top. Okay, so once we've got the two screws off, we pull the panel loose from the bottom, and you can see the clips here. These clips uh, act as sort of a hinge, so you can pull it and then lower it down. And then once you've gotten this loose, basically, you'll disconnect the uh, door wires and or better yet, just loosen your connection here. Now this one, make sure it's unplugged. This one has the, the light on it, so I'm just going to disconnect the light temporarily because we need to take this front sort of cowl off here. And there's some screws along the sides here. We can take that front cowl off. And I'm just going to set this aside. Be careful uh, with that door switch because we still have wires connected to it. Make sure it's nice and stable, doesn't go anywhere. And then sometimes I'll just sort of, if I've got the room, just lay this down here right next to it so I don't, I don't have to disconnect these wires. These wires notoriously can break, so you have to be careful with them if you try and remove them and make sure the unit is unplugged. Okay, so next we're going to take this cowl off. Remove these screws on the sides and we'll do that now. Okay, so we've got the, the front cowl off. <clears throat> and then one thing we want to check here is these skids. These Teflon skids, they should be plastic. They should look good here. Nice and thick plastic here. If they're, if they're uh, if they're worn through and the felt is showing and the plastic is not all here, it's Teflon plastic basically, then they need to be replaced. Okay, and then the belt, basically to disconnect the belt, um, you have to go back here to this panel on the bottom and what I do is before I take the belt off, usually I'll, I'll make a little uh, uh, representational diagram on the side with a felt pin to uh, indicate how that belt goes on the pulley. Um, so there's sort of a special way this belt goes on the pulley. Um, so yeah, that, it's got to wrap around that pulley in a certain way. So you want to make sure that you remember how that came off. Okay, let's take a look at the inside real quick here. So this roller looks good. Of course, I will. Okay, watch out for spiders. Hey, Mr. Spider. 
Time for you to go somewhere else. Uh, so I will lube all these rollers and idlers. And this one here apparently also had a bad blower. So that I had to remove it for some reason. Um, and if we look at this blower here. Um, it looks good here. This one looks good. And what we're looking for is slop. So if you have slop, this is a spline shaft, the motor shaft is splined. If you have slop in the blower, then it's probably a good idea to replace that blower. And here's another one. And this one doesn't, doesn't have any slop in the blower. Uh, what I'm talking about is slop between the sh motor shaft and the blower wheel. If there's slop, then it should be replaced. Um, I have been known to JB weld these things on and put a new clamp on them to make them work sometimes in a pinch. And so basically, I've already got this motor loose. So what I'm going to do instead of pulling the motor out, um, separately, which I've already started to do on this, because I wasn't sure if I could find a whole assembly, and I was lucky enough to find two of them, and I have one for sale if you need one. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and swap the whole cowl and everything. These cowls uh, are probably going to be identical. They look uh, identical to me, so we're just gonna. This is the old style. This thing here, this motor's probably, I don't know, good, maybe even 20 years old. This is a newer style, as you can tell. It looks a little bit cheaper. That thing's heavy duty. It's actually bigger, bigger around. So. This one actually had the cowl repaired. Not sure why that burnt through there, but it had the cowl repaired. It's a, it's a good, uh, looks like fiberglass repair. So that's, that's a good repair right there. And so they look exactly the same. I'm not sure exactly which one I'll put in. Just because, because so we got colored wires on this one, blue blue, black, white, yellow, red, and then uh, blue, black, so we've got a whole different uh, set of wires on this one, so I'm going to probably have to put this one in here, just because the wires are probably going to be the same, yeah, okay, so the wiring is the same here. So I'll just take this whole cowl out and then swap this whole cowl assembly in there. Okay, so we see that this the motor, this cowl assembly is basically held on by two screws. So these two screws here on the side of the motor hold the motor in place basically. And then on this side of the motor there's that tang. And that tang fits in the body in there. So basically once we loosen these two screws here on the sides, then we can pull it this way and uh, it should pop right out. Actually, there's one more thing that holds this in and it's this screw right here. So once we disconnect this and the two screws there, the whole cowl motor assembly will pop out. Okay, so basically I like to oil these uh, motor bushings and here we can oil the, the idler while we have the assembly out. So there's some felt inside there that will soak up this oil. We just put some, like in there, just let it soak in there, and you can 
see this whole area right in here. I believe this whole area right in here is full of felt that can soak up oil. So, and then I always like to clean any of the lint out around the motor, uh, either holes in this lint, so we can make it run just a little bit cooler. So this side of the motor is a little bit trickier to lube. If you really want to lube it, you can take it out. Sometimes you can, if you have a long nozzle, you can stick it in between here and go in there and lube it in that way. Uh, ideally, you'd want to pull the whole motor out and lube the Lube the bushing felt that way. So this one has been sitting for a while and the oil is kind of seeping down in there. Um, but this one here is stiff. It's real stiff. So what I'm going to do, and I can see that um, the bushing is is loose. It seems the bushing is is loose on the plastic it's not it's not running uh, bushing to shaft it's running uh, bushing to plastic and that would eventually wear this plastic out and so basically what I'm going to do I'm just going to pop this one off and then swap it with this other one that was in there because this one's good I can feel it it's a lot easier to roll and it's running uh, bushing to shaft but this one here is running bushing to uh, roller and so basically this one is it's become the bushing and the shaft it become fused okay so uh, like with the uh, the idlers the rollers can become stiff too and what they'll do is not particularly on these Maytags I've seen them more on the Whirlpool Kenmore rollers the shaft will stick to the bushing and it will roll on the outside between the bushing and the roller and then it will wear out faster than normal um, so that's something you might want to watch for so this one actually had a different front panel, so I had to leave the same front panel on. I had to take this one off this motor and swap it. And so there's your little disclaimer. Um, so you've noticed I've left these wires on, and I when I scrap the motor, usually I'll leave the wires on just so I can tell what the configuration of the wiring is and so <clears throat> I'll just take them off one at a time so for instance this yellow one here pull that one off pull this yellow one off here and put it right on so I know exactly where they're going so there's no question uh, about where the wire should go just swap them one at a time Pull them off, put them on. Okay, out with the old, in with the new. Good, new, used. So, got the wires back on, recording according to the best scenario. So we're gonna slap her back together and see if it's gonna fly. Yeah, and it's always a good idea to clean out any lint you can. And be careful, there could be spiders in here. And basically get up in there and feel around for anything that's clogging it. And we, we like to have this kind of really smooth. 
take a rag and wipe this out so it's nice and smooth in here so the air can flow through there nice and smooth. And a little tip about these blowers. So this is the clamp on the blower. And this clamp goes right in there. Sometimes, sometimes these clamps will become sort of weak and I'll put a regular hose clamp on there, a small hose clamp, because what happens is the spline on the blower can become sort of deformed. And then in a pinch I'll take and put a regular hose clamp or squash this down, compress it so it's bent in a bit, and so it's compressed quite a bit more than normal put it back on and then also like JB weld or epoxy the blower to the shaft but if you do that um, make sure that before it sets up that this blower wheel rolls freely and it's not rubbing on the side of the on the back side of the blower housing I always take the door, the front door knob off just because when I'm moving them around, I don't like it if I'm going in between doors and stuff, this particular kind of door knob uh, has, has a tendency to break off. So I just take them off when I'm not moving them. And I just leave them off until I'm I got the machine planted where it's gonna grow. So when you're putting the front piece back on, whatever the inner cowl thing, make sure that this seal here lines up. That seal, that felt seal's gotta be lined up and seated in there correctly. And on these Maytags, the ribs always go outside, so the ribs are facing outside, unlike the Kenmores. The Kenmores and the Whirlpools, the ribs are facing inward. Maytags, the ribs are facing outwards. So that's your classic Maytag tip for today. If this helped you, please send me a donation. It's Bill's. Enterprises P.O. Box 7021 Eureka, California 95502. And if you need any help, you can contact me at applianceworks at yahoo.com. Applianceworks at yahoo.com. Give me a call if you want. 445 1591. That's 707 area code or 443-8347. Thanks.